Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello and welcome to Future Self Dreaming. My name is Carlos Kukulkan and uh, today I've got the pleasure of introducing whoever's watching this to a friend of mine, Dr. Nick Berry of Essential Oil Wizardry. Hey, brother. Hey, how you doing, Carlos? I'm perfect, man. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a pleasure to see you, and uh, I know that we've just connected real quickly before we started recording. But uh, been really excited about doing this with you, man. And um, it's interesting that uh, we're coming up on the the solstice tomorrow. I think it's a perfect time timing. And I just realized my 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 first interview that I did a few months ago uh, with Ronald Holt was the day before the equinox as well. So it's actually been mm. three months apart. Mm. How are you doing? I'm well, man. Yeah, cool. super inspired in Ashland. Nice. You're in Ashland at the moment? I am. Ah, okay. So have you moved from San Luis Obispo? Yep. Yeah, okay. lots of lots of updates and upgrades for yep. essential oil wizardry. So I noticed on the uh, on your website uh, that you were talking about um, purchasing some property in Ashland. Is that what you've done? Yeah, so we, we took an initial step towards that dream. Um, we found a we found a beautiful space that we're renting and we were able to set up a lab and invested in some lab equipment. And uh, yeah, things things are steadily growing and moving forward in very expansive ways. Awesome. Um, I'd be really interested to hear more about that. I suppose we should, for people who are viewing though, um, explain what it is that you do. You know, uh, you and I met quite a few years ago now, I guess, um, when I was in the States. And, uh, you know, part of my reasoning for doing these interviews with people was just introducing friends to people that have inspired me and, uh, and are passionate about what they do, you know, and uh, you are, are one of those dudes that just vibrates that passion and enthusiasm and energy into what you do, man. So, you have a, a company that uh, distributes essential oils, essentially. And um, uh, yeah, can you tell us a bit about that, how you got into it to start with? Yeah, so um, I started off my journey for wellness. Uh, I started training as a pharmacist. So I got my doctor of pharmacy in 2009. And mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated with um different healing modalities and ways that we can really increase the quality of our lives. So I kept an open mind, open heart, and kept exploring all types of alternative therapies uh, as I was continuing to um, continuing a career. Uh, my, my, uh, my first pharmacy career was a, a holistic Eastern Western pharmacy um, in Southern California. And um, I went to Burning Man for my first time in 2010. And I got introduced to quite a number of uh, interesting characters. And um, I started to uh, perceive different opportunities. I had some friends that were opening up a cannabis lab testing facility. And for me, I I've always seen cannabis as a medicine. Mm -hmm. um, it's been quite a number of years since it's been uh, a medicine that I've preferred to use in my own physiology. But as I started diving into the, the science and the pathophysiology uh, around cannabis and different disease states, what I started noticing is that um, different strains of cannabis contain different therapeutic components. And so I started uh, doing consulting at cannabis clinics and advising, um, kind of guiding patients around what might be the best strains for them based on their specific symptomology. And so when I started doing more research on the plant, that's when I started discovering terpenes. So terpenes are aromatic molecules responsible for flavor and fragrance, and they're also pharmacologically active at very low concentrations. And so what I started tuning into is that um, terpenes are not only found inside cannabis, but they're found in all different types of plants. And what I started learning is that these terpenes can synergize and modulate the different cannabinoids. And so Based on this, I started asking myself, where else are terpenes found in nature? And how can we modulate patient therapy utilizing less 
uh, less cannabis, less side effect profile, and really increase the therapeutic outcomes. And so my answer into that soon became essential oils. So essential oils are really concentrated. Um, they're a concentrated uh, plant essence that are extracted from, uh, from the plant. Quite commonly, the essential oil is uh, done through a steam distillation process using water as a solvent. And so um, after collecting an essential oil, you're primarily dealing with plant terpenes. And so, you know, essential oils can be considered to be the, the intelligence of a plant. They're hardly pharmacological, and in nature, their job is to communicate amongst itself. So trees can communicate to birds, they can attract pollinators, they can repel pests, uh, they can, um, you know, different plants can attract uh, mates uh, to spread their wild pollens. So terpenes really have this um, innate intelligence and a messenger role. And so part of that messenger role is what attracts humans, right? When a, when a human smells jasmine flowers and is absolutely intoxicated by its aromatic beauty, we become inspired by jasmine flowers and we say, I want to be surrounded by jasmine. And so we may have the opportunity to <clears throat> either invest in some jas fresh jasmine flowers or maybe we're inspired to start growing them in our garden. And so by their, by their beauty and the, the therapeutic benefits or their aromatic profile, um, you know, the plants are able to communicate within nature to humans to say, we're an important species and we want to continue our role on this planet and we invite you to sow our wild seeds. <laughs> awesome. So it's the terpenes that, that are essentially doing the communicating. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, wow. And, you know, so I guess it's just making me think of the use of perfumes and things over time that people would wear, you know, for attracting mates, essentially, some mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, cool. Totally. Um, yeah, that's fascinating, man. Like, so I didn't realize that your your um, introduction to that had come through cannabis. And obviously, you know, the laws and whatnot are changing over in the states around the use of, of cannabis as a, as a medicine and whatnot. It, I've noticed your... Um, also providing CBD oil uh, via we essential oil. Yeah. yeah, we do have some hemp products that contain CBD. Okay. Yeah. But, and and uh, What I was going to mention is uh, the, the CBD products that we prefer to work with have been, um, they uh, have less than trace amounts, uh, you know, around zero THC. So the, the CBD oil that we're sourcing is organic CO2 extracted hemp oil that's been molecularly distilled to remove out all the THC. So in my mm -hmm. own physiology, what I've noticed is that THC, even small amounts, and I'm talking about amounts that are around the legal limit, 0.3%, uh, for instance. For my physiology, that's too much. Uh, I find around one-tenth of the legal limit is about what my perception can really uh, receive. Otherwise, my, my thoughts and my focus seem to get affected um, by even the small amounts of THC, even though I won't particularly get high, I'll kind of lose my direction and lose my focus. And so um, the hemp oil that we source, I, I focus on getting um, just trace, trace amounts. It's said to be zero THC. And it's um, I, I find that to be the clearest experience. Um, THC is said to have some synergistic effects for pain, and um, so that's something to note and to be aware of. And uh, I also think there's something really wonderful about the zero THC quality. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the CBD is becoming much more popular. Um, yeah, without the THC influence, isn't it? And what what effects uh, have you been gaining from just the use of CBD yourself, or, or seen in other people? Yeah. So um, 
For me, I find that the the hemp oil, so I have a few different formulations and um, all of our formulations are infused with different essential oils and CO2 extracts and are really focused and modulated uh, for specific intentions. So I have a, a, an anti-inflammatory pain uh, formulation. I have a, a men's relaxation formula. I have a woman's hormone formula. And I also have an immune stimulating formulation. And um, so all of them kind of have their own unique vibration. I would say that the, the hemp oil, the CBD, really seems to relax the physiology. I find that it can deepen the sleep quality, um, especially depending on the dose. Larger amounts can can definitely relax the body deeper and um I, I find that I can get a deeper quality of sleep. Um, in conjunction with the essential oils, they really go in the directions kind of uh, targeted with the essential oil formula. So men's relaxation, for instance, is great for men who are um, feeling stressed, overwhelmed. Um, you know, it's kind of great at the end of the evening or if uh, you kind of need a pause um, again, having the zero THC, I find that it's, it's, uh, the formulation is nice to be able to use at any point throughout the day or evening. I don't find any mental cognitive dysfunction. And so it can be used by most people, it, um, you know, at an office job or, uh, whatever the midday activities are and still be very lucid and clear. Um, we have our women's hormone formula. I've, I've actually had some really, really amazing stories come from that one. Um, I've, I've had several women who hadn't had their periods between um, about one and 10 years. And um, after utilizing the uh, women's hormone formula and the moon cycle formulation daily, I've had multiple reports, somewhere around three that have personally reported to me that within a month of using these every day, uh, they actually restarted their cycle. So that's pretty big and amazing. Yeah. Wow. I guess, uh, you know, what I'm thinking about as you're talking about that is just the, the way that we're, you know, particularly, I guess, in Western society, so disconnected from nature largely, you know, and have isolated ourselves from mm -hmm. the, the healing powers of these plants and herbs. And I guess that using essential oils is a very kind of subtle and safe way of, of reintroducing that connection for people to the plant kingdom. Huh? Yeah. You, I feel like, um, I feel like in the mainstream, there's a lot of hype and excitement around the world of essential oils. And mm. so I would say that there's more education and more information that's circulating and percolating through our mainstream society. And mm. so it makes it easier for me to um, just present a superior quality product, um, you know, using my natural expression. And I feel like there's a baseline of education that's really starting to integrate in America for sure. And so um, people are relatively open to it. It doesn't it doesn't seem like it's super woo woo anymore. And, um, and so people are really open to listen, uh, to what I have to say, to share the message from the oils. Yeah. Well, I guess that's, um, you know, one of, one of the reasons that I was so inspired by it was your presence and what you're embodying and your relationship to those plants, because there'd certainly been plenty of people around me in the circles that I mix with that have been involved in, um, you know, some, some of the, uh, mainstream, um, uh, production lines of, of essential oils, you know, but I think what you're embodying your relationship, your passion and your enthusiasm for educating people about this, you know, like it, it sparked something in me, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed, you know, working with your, your products daily. So I, that's why I wanted you to talk to other people about it, you know? Um, yeah, thanks, man. I was interested in what you were saying about, um, uh, what was it? The, the combination of using like CBD with the oils. So are the, the products that you're making, are they blending those or do you have some sort of protocol for using like CBD in conjunction with various uh, essential oils? 
Yeah, so um, I would say that our, our company is probably known for our, um, our different wizard alchemy blends. And mm. so I have somewhere around 100, 120 different products that I've personally formulated uh, that range from therapeutics to uh, botanical perfumes. We have some ceremonial blends. We have our Divine Align Chakra set, which is probably our most popular uh, set of oils. Mm. Um, our, our hemp CBD products and our kava products. Uh, we do have a, a full line of essential oils and CO2 extracts, um, which are single ingredient products. Um, to answer your question very directly, we do pre-formulate a number of hemp products in conjunction with the essential oils. You know, my goal is to make things ready to rock and roll for the end user to appreciate. And um, I like having uh, botanical products that are potent and effective. Um, I also, uh, I, I appreciate having education available for people. So, um, you know, having, having a beautiful collection of our oils uh, goes a lot further by having certain experiences with them. So kind of diving into the oils and, and experimenting and exploring, but mm. also having some level of knowledge and awareness about the, the different blends, the single ingredient products, how they work, what, what they're great for. Um, I would say that my personal journey uh, was a combination of both of that. It was doing a lot of research on PubMed.gov, which is a clinical uh, it's it's a clinical website that hosts a bunch of uh, clinical trials, and it's uh, hosted by the government. And um, I actually used that website to start studying. Uh, what the therapeutic effects were of different terpene molecules and different um, constituents that were found inside essential oils. So once I started learning about how the essential oils worked in the body, I was able to postulate what types of effects we might be able to see. And so that was my foundation, which really helped to support my awareness and my journey. I was balancing the the knowledge base by uh, experimenting and investing in oils and exploring them in my own body. Cause I feel applied wisdom is so important to balance out that knowledge base. Mm. Are the other terpenes, are they taken in through the olfactory sense? Yes. Um, they, they, uh, typically are absorbed through the nose. I mean the, the essential oils, which contain the terpene molecules, um, can be used in many different ways. Transdermally, some people orally ingest them. We can talk about that a little bit more. Um, they're intranasally, transdermal. Um, you know, people enjoy using them in a bathtub, um, you know, in a diffuser. Uh, you can inhale them. So in through the lungs, many different methods. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, like many people, I suppose you're, you're, um, you started by talking about your experience at Burning Man and that being, you know, part of the stimulation for um, and inspiration for working with these oils. And certainly when I was at Burning Man in 2015, you know, there were plenty of um, uh, our collective network of friends that were carrying your oils around the festival with them, you know, for all sorts of purposes for, you know, psychic protection and for uh, energy and stimulation and, and whatnot. So, and it was just, uh, it was beautiful to see that network that you have created of, of people, you know, sharing and uh, yeah, sharing the oils. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. It's uh, mm. definitely been a heart passion share for the past, uh, I think it's been about five years, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, you know, there are, just to detour you slightly, um, my, my, I guess my, my vision statement, uh, with what I'm doing with this, uh, project called future self dreaming really is, uh, it's all, it's all about, you know, connecting people with what might be loosely termed the higher self, you know, described by different cultures all around the world by a number of names. And so I was wondering, you know, I like to ask guests that I have, uh, several questions about that, you know, like one, what does that concept of the higher self mean to you? How do you experience 
your higher self and how does it inform the work that you bring in so passionately with the the oils cool man um let's do one question at a time so uh first question um what is the higher self to me yeah what does it um, mean yeah so I feel like the the concept of the higher self, I feel like there is a um, maybe a source intelligence in which we all come from. I feel mm -hmm. like we are all literally in somehow in some frequency of energy or of consciousness, we are all connected. And so I, I believe and or feel an experience in my own reality that the higher self is the innate intelligence it's the grand intelligence and so i feel like um nick berry or or dr nick is the little me and it's the personality that i embody that i get to experience on planet earth and i feel as i when i am living in my heart and i keep my mind still i am able to perceive and to listen and it's it shows up to me uh, in a sense of intuition. And so lots of ways I tap into my intuition. Sometimes it's listening. Uh, a, a, a tool or a methodology that I commonly use is muscle testing. So I'll actually um, use muscle tests to um, answer different potential pathways for my direction. And so I'm using my physical body as a tool to guide me to listen to what is most aligned with my highest self. And um, so what other questions did you want me to reflect on higher self? Well, I guess the second one was uh, that you've already sort of started to, to mention. So there was sort of what does the higher self, that concept mean to you? How do you experience it? I suppose you started to talk about your experience of it working with the body as a, as a tool for, for aligning with that. And, um, and the other part to it was how does it inform um, your, your work with the, with the essential oils, you know, and, mm -hmm. and guide you in that, that passion? Yeah, so um, in my process in working and synergizing with the oils, um, when I'm formulating a new blend, I, I tune in with all the oils. So my process is I will literally look at my my shelf of probably about 150 pure essential oils and um, CO2 extracts and floral absolutes, all pure ingredients in bulk quantity. So I'll look at, I'll look at my ingredient list and I will just listen to which oils want to combine for the specific formulation or the intention that I'm about to craft. And so um, I'll, I'll literally say, is there an oil on the first shelf? No. Second shelf? No. Third shelf? Okay, third shelf. Is it first row, second row? Okay, third row. And then I'll, I'll tune in with each individual oil. And, um, and so I, give, I get my formulas given to me from something that is outside of me. <laughs> and that was a transition that took some time, I believe. I believe that maybe started occurring in 2017, possibly 2016. And I find that I use very little of my mind to conceive of formulations these days. Sometimes I still do tap into my mind about, oh, what would be nice aromatic blended formulations? Um, and then sometimes certain ingredients get selected through muscle testing for those. So, um, even the order in which I'm combining the essential oils, the concentrations of which of each of them that I'm using in the final formulation, um, the uh, the different frequencies that I'm charging them with, the um, the the crystal balls that I'm playing in the oil, playing the oils in with. Um, all the ways that I amplify the oils, you know, everything I'm, I'm doing muscle testing. And, and so what I'm doing is I'm tapping into a part of myself that is outside of my mind. And I am also tuning in with the energy and the intelligence of the oils. And I'm saying, how do you guys want to be expressed? How can I share you with the world? Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. That's kind of answered the, the one of the questions that I had just before I detoured then, which was around uh, how you combine these blends, you know, because often when I share them with with friends, you know, they're, they're impressed by all of the uh, – all the layers of different oils that are blended together and there's something really special about those alchemical blends um so yeah i'm happy to hear that it's the, this a sense of this guidance that you're having and working with the the uh, intelligence of these these plants being guided to blend them together i guess um as you were talking as well it was make you know around that concept of of the the higher self and this this source energy you know the the plants being um you know, I tend to think in terms of vibration, and that was another thing that you were expressing about, you know, the vibration of the the oils themselves, and then charging them with the different um, modalities that you use, such as the crystal bowls and and uh, and other things. But like the uh, the transmission of light from our our sun and the the direct um, sort of photosynthesis that the the plants are going through, transmuting this light into uh, the the terpenes, you know, those molecules and whatnot, and then that we take that in, you know, it's all a kind of a, a stepping down of vibration and frequency uh, into the physical level from from that that light frequency in a sense, isn't it? Yeah, I totally resonate with all of that. I feel that the uh, the essential oils in the the plant terpenes are literally light in formation. So mm. you know, the information coming from our sun. Uh, guides the the um, the plant to develop these uh, different molecules to support its existence in physical reality, and so you know the sun provides that information for the plants, which have these amazing properties that help to strengthen the immune system and attract all the pollinators and just really increase the vitality of its life. Mm-hmm. Um, and where, where are you, I know you've just been over to Bali, uh, recently, uh, presumably you might've been doing some sourcing of material or whatnot while you're over there. I, I don't know about that trip, but like, how do you go about sourcing the, the various material that you get? Yeah. So I've definitely had some good mentors along the way. And so regarding sourcing, um, there's, a uh, you know, I feel like the sourcing is the first aspect of producing a premium quality product. And so when I'm looking at sourcing uh, products, uh, organic and wild crafted is the direction that I like to choose. I love having something with the maximum amount of vitality um, as a final product. Mm. So something something about me is I'm I'm less interested in an oil having the pedigree of being a, a great product, but just kind of being flat and boring. I'm more interested in having a real rich and vibrant, healthy final product. So what that means is um, there's many third world countries that are producing some amazing botanical extracts that literally don't have the financial resources to... Um, or the the wherewithin to contact governmental agencies to get certified organic certifications. And so um, there's been times when I've looked into uh, sourcing some material and it's not certified organic, but it's been growing on uh, in farms with a, a collective, a co-op of different farmers that are you know, using conscious cultivation methods and um, are not using pesticides. And the vitality is just, it's amazing. It's wild. And um, and so for me, it feels really great to be able to listen to that. And when I'm sourcing, um, when I'm sourcing ingredients, I always ask for uh, samples before I'm investing in larger quantities. And so um, companies have been able to provide samples for me. And when I love something, you know, I'm getting resonance with the people that I'm working with, then I, I love supporting that group and organization and bringing their botanical extracts to our community. So, mm. um, 
So yeah, wild crafted organic, um, I would say over 95% of our products um, fall on, under one of those range. And then anything else would um, make sure to fall under the category where there's no toxic pesticides uh, used in the ingredients or in the plant material to produce the final product. So, um, you know, again, I, I think uh, when I'm sourcing, Thinking about the bigger picture of how the plants um, exist in its natural habitats, um, whether the species is endangered or not, um, you know, how people are being treated in the um, in the supply line. These are all questions that I, I do my best to ask. And over the years, I've um, I'm probably working with about 15 or 20 different suppliers around the world these days. And um, and so quite a number of these suppliers have been um, handed down to me by uh, one of my mentors. And so he had been working with them for approximately two decades, some of these. And um, since I've started my company, I've probably been reached out to approximately 10 times to explore people's different uh, botanical products. And so... Um, you know, I'm always happy to receive a sample, and if I if I like something, and and uh, we have a a community that's excited about it, then we're happy to make an investment. So um, that's a little bit about our sourcing process. Yeah, great. You know, um, just uh, I guess on what you just mentioned there with the vitality uh, of these organic wild crafted plants, I was, I mentioned something in the presentation I did the other day in relation to drinking tea, you know, which is a real passion of mine, but also, uh, ingesting, ingesting other herbs and medicinal mushrooms and things that have, uh, you know, what's referred to as adaptogen qualities, uh, and those, you know, those wild plants that have, uh, really had to endure the, the elements, um, and become strong and have, ha have those, uh, adaptogen qualities, you know, we take those, into our own bodies and immune systems and whatnot when we uh, are ingesting them, but presumably, um, you know, even being exposed to the, the terpenes in the uh, in the essential oils would uh, convey some of those characteristics, I would imagine. Yeah, I, um, I totally relate with everything that you're sharing on that note. Um, you know, you're talking about adaptogenic uh, herbs in general, and uh, synchronicity is we just finished an ultrasonic extraction here in-house on some uh, holy basil, um, Tulsi. And uh, this plant is known... It's it's quite a revered plant in India, and it's known for its adaptogenic qualities. And um, Tulsi tea seems to be somewhat calming for the nervous system, a little bit of a, a mood elevator. Um, the essential oil, I've definitely experimented vaporizing using an essential vape vaporizer. Um, and I find that to be extremely meditative, focusing, and almost a little bit euphoric. Um, the ultrasonic Tulsi, uh, we literally finished it yesterday as a tincture and, um, how I experience it in my body and I, I was playing with it and kind of stacking the dose throughout the day. I really found this to have a, almost a, almost a powerful nervine, um, relaxing quality to it. Um, I probably ingested about six or seven dropperfuls over the course of the day. And this is much more than I would suggest uh, for most people just wanting to receive the therapeutic benefit of it. I was just kind of exploring and seeing where it goes. And um, I would say right around three droppers or four droppers after several hours, I noticed that I was actually quite tired. Like my nervous system was super relaxed and I was primed to get a deep quality of sleep. Um, so, you know, it's interesting because different extraction methods will yield uh, not only different constituents found inside the plant, but they will also yield uh, different types of qualities and expressions of the plants. And so while I find the essential oil or having some tea uh, to be a little bit more uplifting, clarifying, and purifying, 
I found that the um, the ultrasonic tincture, which uh, really does a great job of a of a full spectrum extract, uh, really has this powerful nervine tonic effects where it's. Um, I could see it being quite supportive for people who are having difficult times uh, with getting enough rest. I feel that this will really quiet the mind, still the nervous system at the right dose. Awesome. You know, that kind of brings me to my, my next question, which was around um, uh, the extraction process. You know, we live in yeah. a, a time, I guess, where we've got, you know, the most advanced technology uh, available to us. and. Obviously, extraction methods via drinking tea have been used uh, for cultures uh, for millennia, you know, where we just essentially add hot water to some of these plants to extract their essence and qualities. But there's a number of other extraction methods that have been developed over time. Um, you mentioned before, you, you know, some of the process that you use is a steam extraction. I know you've also mentioned the ultrasonic extraction and CO2 extraction. Like, mm -hmm. uh, can you share a bit about those methods? Yeah. So um, what I guess I'll do uh, is I'll give you guys, uh, give the listeners a brief summary for each of these. Um, I'll start off by highlighting that there's going to be numerous advantages and potentially disadvantages with each type of extraction method, right? Um, could be cost of equipment, could be uh, sustainability or renewability of, um, of uh, solvent. It could be um, any residual solvent. Um, so each, each extraction method is going to have its own uh, benefits and disadvantages. So steam distillation is the most common extraction for, for an essential oil. And it uses water as a solvent and you're, you're heating it up so the water steams through the plant material where it collects the different uh, essential, essential oils into the water. And then as it runs through a condenser that has chilled water um, running around the tube, it's going to cool down the steam so the essential oil and the water that was running through the plant material is now going to cool and liquefy. And so at the end of the collecting flask, you're going to have two separate layers. One are going to be the uh, essential oil, which is typically on top uh, because most essential oils are actually have a lighter density than water. And... Um, the, uh, the, the water is going to be on the bottom. This is in most cases. And that water is going to be um, filled with some uh, aromatic terpenes that are more water soluble. And so that water is a byproduct of the essential oil extraction, and it's called the hydrosol. So um, CO2 extracts are, t are a little bit more, a little less common on the essential oil market as a whole. Uh, they tend to be more full spectrum. They're said to be approximately two to three times more potent, therapeutically speaking, than a steam distilled essential oil. Um, I believe one of our uh, one of our uh, providers for the CO two extracts say that they're about twice as potent, therapeutically speaking, than a steam distilled essential oil. So um, CO two extracts are somewhat of a lengthy process and um, it utilizes carbon dioxide as a solvent and by modulating the pressure and temperature you can turn the CO2 gas into a liquid, run the liquid through the plant material and then it, the CO2 will collect the um, the aromatic molecules and then by using strong pressure uh, it it really pushes and, and sucks out a lot of the, um, the aromatic molecules into the CO2. And um, once the liquid is drained when the, um, and the plant material is separated, the, the essential oil or the CO2 extract is able to be left behind, which is a very concentrated, um, you know, uh, terpene rich um, extract. And the carbon dioxide is actually just going to leave the solution because it's gas at room temperature. So um, CO2 extractions are very clean extraction methods. You're typically able to use lower temperature, which is a benefit compared to a steam distilled essential oil. Lots of the aromatic terpenes are... Um, can be uh, very delicate and can be damaged. And so... 
Um, and so when you're using something like a CO2 extraction machine, where there's going, you can actually use less temperature. And so that's one benefit. Um, there's solvent extracted absolutes. That is quite common for delicate aromatic flowers where um, their, their delicate notes would get damaged by heat. And so, um, you know, jasmine absolute, rose absolute, blue lotus absolute. These are all examples of, um, of very rich full spectrum uh, solvent extracts. And so there's some pretty gnarly solvents that are commonly used for these absolutes. Um, typically an absolute, I would say the standard of uh, extraction is typically um, using hexane as a solvent. The hexane is run through the plant material. The hexane is then evaporated out of plant material and you're left with uh, concrex. And the, um, the concrete is this, uh, you can think of it as a, a concrete of aromatic wax and essential oil. So once you evaporate out all the, um, or a majority of the toxic, toxic solvent, you're going to run alcohol through the concrete and the alcohol is going to collect the aromatic uh, material. It's going to kind of wash the material, pull it away from a residual solvent. And um, you then take that alcohol, you separate it out of the, uh, the aromatic concrete, and you evaporate the alcohol away. And then what you're left with is the absolutes. And so absolutes are, um, they produce very beautiful full spectrum products. They're not typically suggested for internal use. Um, they are, um, you know, so some of them can be done really cleanly. Sometimes they are, uh, we actually have a cacao absolute, which is phenomenal and uh, uses alcohol as the initial solvent. And so it's a very clean extract. Um, so the absolutes are very full spectrum. They're rich, they're deep, and they're thick. And um, our ultrasonic extraction technology that we're doing in-house are um, really great for, uh, we're producing some pretty awesome full spectrum products and we're getting reasonably high yields. We're using water as a solvent. So the process itself takes about a week to do um, a relatively small amount of plant material because we're currently, um, uh, you know, I would say within about the next three to nine months, we'll look at scaling our equipment because um, we, we really are starting to get our protocol down and people are stoked on our ultrasonic extracts. Um, so the benefit, uh, what ultrasonic extraction process is doing is the ultrasonic waves break down the cell walls of the plant material and it spills out the essential oil and the different plant alkaloids and it does this relatively quickly and so we're able to um, remove the the uh, different uh, constituents found inside the plant and we then use a vacuum filtration process to clean up and remove the plant material and the different lipids and, and um, waxes from the solution. And then we concentrate that by removing the hydrosol using vacuum filtration or um, uh, by uh, using a rotary evaporator. And so, what we do is we are um, doing a vacuum distillation method. And so one benefit of our ultrasonic extraction processes is we're able to use very low temperature um, to actually distill off the water because we're using um, vacuum pressure. And so we're able to produce a very potent extract. And um, we've been formulating these into tinctures. And we've been doing this for about nine months and we have some really awesome plants that we've been working with. We have, um, so far we've done uh, mugwort, we've done Damiana, we've done skullcap, we've done um, Tulsi, we've done Epimedium, which is also known as horny goatweed. Uh, we've done cacao, uh, we've done Kana. We experimented with frankincense, didn't have that great of results. 
Uh, we just finished a rose extract. I think we did somewhere around 750 grams of, um, of rose petals over two runs. And we literally got eight grams of plant material of a uh, final extract. So that was the, the smallest yield ever. And uh, the product's absolutely beautiful. And we're going to be reserving that product for our alchemy club. Um, so, I yeah. Was, I think you gave me some blue lotus at one stage, didn't you? Did, was that you? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, our blue lotus absolute is really, really special. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're talking, man, I keep uh, having flashbacks of this book and I just cannot remember the name of it, you know. I, possibly because I've loaned it to a girlfriend and she hasn't given it back yet, but uh, uh, it's, you, you'd know it. It's about perfumes and, and beetroots and a couple looking for questing for immortality. Do you know the book I'm talking about? I haven't read it. No. Is it, um, I mean, Jitterbug Perfume yeah. is one I haven't read and, um, you know, I've, I've been told I need to read it. I've even been gifted it by one of our Alchemy Club members and, uh, yeah, I just haven't read it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I've read, I've read it half of it a couple of times because it's it's a really heavy duty read, you know. Um, mm. But the theme, the themes in it are, are quite profound, and I, th I think, again, you've obviously been recommended that by people that have read it and and you know know what you do. So at some stage, maybe you read it, we'll get to discuss it. Yeah. Um, you were talking before about um, you know the the process of. Uh, experiencing these uh, the effects essentially you know and um, I was wondering are you running workshops or uh, how do you suggest that people go about uh, experiencing the effects because they obviously affect our, our moods our emotional states uh, our nervous system immune system um, yeah what do you what, what do you suggest how, how do people uh, have an experience with it or how would you go about it yeah. Um, so I think how I'm interpreting your, I'll go ahead and I'll answer the question how I'm interpreting it. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like the plants and the oils are really the best teachers. Yes. And um, over the past, geez, five years or so, I've been investing a lot of time and energy to write up different reports, um, collecting information about how plants are historically used, um, the different terpenes that are found inside the plant extracts, um, my personal experience with the product. Uh, you know, I, I do my best to weave a story and um, make that into a product description. Um, and I've done a lot of videos explaining uh, different essential oils, um, like pure, pure essential oils and also the different blends and products that we use. Um, I feel like essential oils, there's, you know, they're, they're very complex and there is so much to learn about them. And so I feel that um, having a great basis of knowledge is really helpful for integrating and kind of setting a frame. And I also simultaneously feel that the oils are the best teachers. And so um, I've had some great mentors along the way. I've looked at, um, you know, uh, some scientific literature about the individual components found inside essential oils. I looked at practitioner handbooks on essential oils. And really, it was the mirage of all of it that really... Um, allowed me to further my awareness of the oils to feel confident in sharing them with people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and really, uh, by investing in my own sets of oils, and then experimenting in my own physiology, sharing them with friends, getting their feedback, and then having my friends say, wow, this is amazing. You should be sharing this with more people. You know, I kept an open mind and an open heart. And I said, OK, great. How? You know, who you know, where do I find people that are excited about exploring um, playing with this? So um, I feel like the best way to have uh, a deeper awareness of the oils is to literally experience them. And mm -hmm. so um so I invested in the oils and I also did my best to learn about them so that I was able to turn uh, knowledge into applied wisdom. Mm, 
Mm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like I, uh, I guess I have learned a lot from my experience uh, of uh, with various plants and whatnot as well. And I, I mentioned in a presentation the other day, again talking about tea, that I think the uh, you know the trend towards the use of of psychedelics at the moment um, as you know beneficial as it is is also very enticing because of how powerful they are you know and sometimes we miss the uh we miss the subtle effects of of some of these plants again through their oils or um you know tea again it's one that i love to sit with and experience you know the spirit of that plant and ingest it and see uh what effects that it has on my body and it's the same with the oils you know whether i put them in a, a vaporizer or put them on my body or just sniff them you know um so yeah getting people to experience them that's why i was wondering whether you run workshops at all are you doing that will that be something that you're doing at the the new center in ashland yeah so um you know i i've been historically doing uh events and play shops at festivals and i've also hosted quite a number of private retreats um, we've hosted some private retreats here on the property in Ashland, and we've also hosted some larger retreats. Um, I think our, our uh, first uh, transformational botanical retreat was in 2017, and it was out in Jacksonville, which is uh, about an hour here from Ashland. And um, that event was so phenomenal. We had about 25, 30 attendees. And um, it's in my heart to continue that work on a grander scale. And so we will likely host another um, larger retreat next year. Um, this year, I've been really integrating, taking it easier i lost my father several months ago and so i've um i've been feeling the call to just uh really anchor and um continue building our, the foundation for our company and um i do have a you know I, I guess what i can share is i do have an excitement in working on a deeper level with people who are serious about um, integrating the oils into their life integrating it into the lives of the people that they love. Um, so I, I am starting to feel my my role as a as a provider and a medicine producer um, shift from one that is um, educating, taking my personal time and energy to um, personally one on one educate everyone to starting to work with a community of people that are inspired about the plants. Um, really hone a deeper level of knowledge and wisdom for the people that are feeling committed in that way. And um, yeah, really building a stronger community around the plants and the oils. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about the history of uh, essential oils? Presumably cultures around the world, you know, various cultures have had their methods of extracting them and whatnot. But is there anything you can share about that history? Um, so what I can share is that, um, I've been, I guess what I've read in the past has been that there is a, um, a philosopher, I think it was around the ninth century that, um, was a Mediterranean philosopher by the name of Abni Sena. And we actually have an, a, a botanical perfume inspired by him. And so um, Avni Sena uh, really, he was, a, he was a philosopher and um, really an artisan man, uh, or a, what's the terminology, a renaissance man, and was uh, deeply in love with the, with the botanical essence of rose. And um, he hypothesized that um, that their their precious set could be um, could be extracted. And so, uh, to my knowledge, he was the first man to ever distill rose essential oil. Um, I I know that I'm less focused on the history, and that um, there may be other pieces to the puzzle. Maybe a different essential oil was distilled before or extracted. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a history piece that I think is kind of fun to, to weave with. Cool. 
Um, and I know before we got started, you mentioned that you've got some products there that you may have wanted to share about. Was there anything sp specifically that you wanted to introduce to us? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to flow and just kind of share some different things that want to come through. Definitely. Um, so I guess another thing that maybe before we get started, I can share a little bit about some different qualities which make our essential oil products unique. Because mm -hmm. um, as you had mentioned uh, about sharing our oils with friends, um, you know, there is a very particular vibration to our products that make them unique compared to other essential oil brands. Yeah. And um so there's quite a number of different uh, technologies that we use to apply to amplify the potency of our products. So, yeah. you know, after starting off with, uh, with, you know, organic and wild crafted, amazing essential oils, for me personally, that's really just the baseline of where we're going with our final products. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of different processes we use to amplify the potency and the vibrations of the oils. So examples of that, as I mentioned before, um, we tune all of our blends uh, in a set of 432 hertz crystal balls, um, each tuned to different notes, A through G. And um, so each blend will get a different quality infused into the blend. And what's really interesting about all of these different energetic qualities they really seem to affect the different characteristics, um, typically the aromatic qualities of the oil. And the um, infusing the oils or into bottles, into the crystal bowls, is really one of the most uh, pronounced changes from before and after. Um, so after vibrating the oil in a in a tune in a crystal bowl, um, there's some pretty profound changes that can occur. Um, we also are um, we use carrier oils in lots of our blends and formulations. We we use um, fractionated coconut oil. So fractionated coconut oil is coconut oil which is heated and then centrifuged. And so um, when the when the coconut oil is centrifuge the different uh, size chain triglycerides are separated and so fractionated coconut oil is also known as mct and um, it's a medium chain triglycerides and the fractionated coconut oil is liquid at room temperature it has a long stable shelf life it doesn't have its own smell and it absorbs into the skin nicely and so it's it's an ideal um carrier oil that comes from a sustainable resource you know the coconuts yeah. and so um so the carrier oils really help to drive essential oils into the skin um so they they help with the absorption through the skin and it it empowers them to take longer to evaporate off of the skin so um, less of the essential oil is lost to evaporation and more of it's driven into the skin. Um, another thing that we've done is we've taken our carrier oil and we, um, we do an ormus extraction on it. And um, so if you want, if people are interested in researching a little bit more about this, you can look into live oil. And so live oil is... Um, utilizing dead sea salt or Celtic sea salt, you can actually extract some of the uh, monoatomic elements from the salt into the carrier oil and it'll be left behind. And so even for me, I'm a little bit less about the energetic qualities of this, even though I do believe that is relevant. I believe on a physiological uh, standpoint, there's mineral content which helps to enhance the osmolality of the solution so that it's more similar to blood plasma. And so these minerals help the uh, the essential oils when when the minerals are, are saturated in the carrier oil. Um, 
and the essential oil, it really helps to drive it deeper into the skin. It helps it last on the skin longer. The therapeutic components, uh, uh, therapeutic uh, qualities seem to uh, be more pronounced. And um, I find that the aromatic qualities seem to also really pop as well. And so that's another example of different ways that we use to amplify the potency of our products. Um, we have different uh, geometries. I know you're going to love this, <laughs> Carlos. We, um, we have quite a number of different geometries. Like I'm actually, I have this pyramid. I have the oils charging under the pyramid right now. Um, we have a number of different uh, technologies and geometries that we will pour the essential oils through the geometry, we'll, we'll sit the essential oils in the geometry, um, and uh, the effects can be anywhere between subtle and pretty pronounced. Um, and uh, we also have quite a number of different charging plates and um, use Organite as well. And so it's been about five years that I've been playing with different tools and technologies in the lab and just using my organoleptic senses, um, so my five senses, uh, to really test some of the qualities and how my body is receiving the oils. And um, my goal is to cons be consistently increasing the quality of our end product. And so... Uh, it's quite regular that we'll find a new piece of tech and incorporate it into the process um, because our goal is to just keep raising our own internal standard and provide the best products that we are capable of producing for our co uh, community. That's all really fascinating, man. You know, um, I guess what you were talking about before, the, the different methods for ingesting them whether it be via the olfactory sensors or transdermal or ingesting them orally you know um and all of the the processes that it goes through you know like i guess that's the the alchemical component of it is you're taking something and uh and putting it through this um process of tr you know transformation transmutation and distilling its essence further and further and then being able to uh, drive that into the body and to have people um, have the most profound experience from it. Yeah, um, thanks yeah. for that. And I love, you know, what, what you were mentioning there again. Uh, I'm always thinking in terms of, of vibration and, and, uh, and geometry and whatnot, but all of these frequencies that you're incorporating uh, from, via the 432 crystal bowls uh, and um, the charging plates and, and everything, the, the geometries are... Again, I, I think that that study of cymatics, when people look at that, the way that sound and vibration structures matter, you know, it, it really um, gives you that visual component of how these frequencies are enhancing the, the, the products that you're using. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I guess like leading on from there, uh, you gave us that little introduction into some of the products that you have there with you that you wanted to, to talk about and share. So uh, where do we go from here? Cool, man. Well, I'll just freestyle. So I brought a few different um, Wizard Alchemy blends and some of our ultrasonic tinctures, and uh, I'll just kind of share a few of them. Um, you know, I... Like I said, I feel the best way to experience the oils is really to have a knowledge base balanced with experience. And mm. so um, I get really excited about basically whatever is uh, whatever's in front of me and interesting. And um, so I'm just going to, yeah, kind of share some of our newest, latest, and greatest. Yep. So this first... Um, ingredient that I'm going to be sharing is our ultrasonic Damiana tincture. And so um, Damiana is a uh, an herb that's been revered in Mexico um, for uh, hundreds, if not thousands of years. And Damiana is said to be a sensual aphrodisiac that is relaxing to the nervous system. Some people have described it similar to cannabis, 
Um, I find that th this is much more clear than the cannabis plant. I find that um, my thoughts are, are very coherent and um, my body still feels very playful and loose. Um, so uh, Damiana is an awesome extract that uh, I enjoy it for going out to dance or to, to really be in my physical body. Um, it's slightly, I'd say like slightly to moderately euphoric, um, and, um, just real nice one to share. The flavor profile is, is quite beautiful. Um, so I don't know if you can see the color, but it's, it's a beautiful, um, rose, uh, amber maple. And, um, we use, uh, organic craft alcohols in our, um, in our tincture formulations to help to stabilize them. And so we use an organic honey spirit alcohol in this formulation. I'm going to just go ahead and take a little half dropper here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, so, I got, I got turned on to, Damiana, I don't know if uh, you've heard of the Happy High Herb stores that we have here in Australia. A friend of mine, Ray Thorpe, uh, mm -hmm. runs that business, and uh, I know he's got some in the States as well. But Damiana is is probably their most popular um, product. And, uh, you know, Ray introduced me to that, drinking it in tea and also in blends that sometimes I have previously used with cannabis, and I've found that that... Um, experience of the mild euphoria and elation that you can get from it, whether you're smoking it or drinking it or ingesting it in a tincture, you know, um, it's beautiful by itself. I often put it in, uh, add it to, to other teas, but um, smoking it with cannabis certainly has my experience has been one of taking the, the, the edge off that paranoia mm. that uh, THC can have as well. Mm, yeah, I can totally perceive that. Mm. Um, so even in what I just took, I'm already feeling it in my physical body and I'm feeling a deeper level of relaxation. Um, my mood and spirits were high and now they're even higher. Um, mm. I just feel light and kind of playful. Um, so it's nice. Uh, let's see what else wants to play. You had mentioned psychic protection. Mm. Do you have any stories that you want to you want to share? Have you have you worked with our psychic protection formulation specifically? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. I use it all, all the time. Um, yeah, I guess it's one of those ones that I uh, I'm mindful of the environments that I can be in, you know. And uh, uh, I had a client the other day who was really talking about taking on. She's very empathic and taking on too much energy from other people around her, you know, and particularly when being at environments like festivals and whatnot, where there's a lot of people around, I've found that uh, I'll, I'll put some directly on my skin, but I also put it in like a little pump pack uh, with some water and just spray that on me to, to keep me cool, but as a sort of a, a, a cleansing mist as well. Yeah. You know? Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, um, yeah, psychic protection is uh, it's an amazing formulation that's great for cutting through negative energy immediately. Um, it's a powerful synergy of uh, CO2 extracted myrrh, cystis, galbanum, spikenard, vetiver, calamus root, angelica root, cypress leaf, and cardamom. So uh, psychic protection is um, really good for... I would say it's almost hitting a, an energetic reset button. So just um, erasing kind of the uh, any type of funk from the space. So what I did is I just applied maybe about four or five drops into my hands. Um, you know, I would say one to three drops is perfectly fine. So I'm now going to rub my hands together and I'm actually just going to rub the oil around my auric field so in front of and in back of my body mm -hmm. and then i'll actually rub it on my body and this is such a powerful tool as you were talking about for um just cutting through negative energy or stuck energy especially around crowds um i've had so many different people report uh their experience around this oil everything from um you know, people who are in performance, uh, you know, athletes, CEOs, movie celebrities, 
Um, this, this formulation has gone far and wide, and it's really powerful for just um, clearing anything funky. It's great for um, being at the office or, you know, if you get in a fight with someone that you love and just kind of want to come to back to a zero point. Um, so I'm glad that you've had uh, some good experience with this one. Bro, t- tell me about uh, probably my favorite, which is Return to Grace. Oh, cool, man. Um, Return to Grace is, uh, so Return to Grace was a gift to a previous beloved that um, we were choosing to separate. And um, it was intended as a gift to support her during this transition process. So it's a combination of steam distilled Turkish Rose Auto, um, Israeli Blood Orange, and Moroccan Cedar infused with fractionated coconut oil and enhanced with some Ormus. And so the, um, the formulation, it was intended to support her through a transition, so to provide grounding while keeping her heart open and expanded and to elevate her mood. And so, you know, you got the cedar the heart um, with the rose and then the mood with the blood orange. And so it's, it's a very simple formulation and it's also really um, a very, very sweet and very opening. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, the intention around that was, uh, was to support those three things. And, and I find that it's very gentle. It's great for forgiveness and elevating the mood and, um, just provides like a safe, comforting, uplifting vibration. Mm-hmm. I love your language with with all of these, dude. I I often laugh at myself. You know, I've got I've got friends that are, uh, are foodies and people that are into coffee or wine drinking. You know, they're passionate about all of these things, and they've got this amazing language of being able to describe different. Um, uh, different flavors or tastes or essences of things and so, sometimes I'll just say it's tasty that's my my cover all word but uh yeah, yeah. It's very, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, I can really relate to when you're talking about uh the subtlety of, of you know different vibrations of of these and I go oh yeah that's what it reminds me of yeah that's my experience of it as well and some of them are light and uplifting and some are quite thick and moody and um yeah they're all all of those blends you know it's amazing uh you sent me that amazing pack uh full of so many of them uh here i was thinking i just wanted this one return to grace (laughs) but uh (laughs) i love i love having them all and again just being sort of guided by what i want to uh uh, you know what i want to take off the shelf that day and uh and i also love all all of the chakra blend that i've got on the the Mm -hmm. uh, bookshelf behind me here you know sometimes i'll just be feeling okay where in my body, which chakra uh, is feeling a bit blocked or whatnot and, and put some of those on and that's how I'll, I'll choose it. Mm, thanks mm. for sharing that. That's rad. <laughs> what else have you got? Well, I was noticing a little tightness in my legs and uh, in my lower back. And <laughs> since I'm uh, having a great conversation with you and I'm not stretching in this moment, to resolve that, I'm going to use some of my pain relief ice formulation. Mm, mm, mm. So <clears throat> pain relief ice is an extremely powerful anti-inflammatory analgesic that also supports the recovery from wounds. And pain relief ice is a combination of lavender, peppermint, helichrysum, black pepper, pink pepper, turmeric, wintergreen, German chamomile, spikenar, neoli, rosewood, arnica, and frankincense. This is a really powerful one. And, um, so I'm going to take a few drops, and I don't know if you can see the color. It's uh, depending it on, rich. yeah, cool. So you can. Mm-hmm. It's um, so German chamomile is uh, is blue in its nature. Mm-hmm. Um, wintergreen is red, and turmeric is gold. And so I find depending on the batches of the ingredients I'm using, this formulation um, is somewhere between green and blue. Mm -hmm. And my experience with this oil is typically um, some of the pain. I would say the onset of it is usually about two to five minutes. Um, It will start opening up the muscles. It will um, start... 
numbing the pain, but actually releasing the tension. And um, typically people report that it lasts about two to four hours. I, I feel like I'm more at the two to three hour mark, um, but people have reported up to four hours of um, support. So I'm and just you, gonna- You apply it directly to the areas where you're experiencing the pain? Exactly, and it's already infused in the carrier oil. Um, and so you can apply it directly on, um, or if you want to further dilute, uh, it's quite concentrated still, so you can um, dilute it a little bit more. Uh, but this is a magical formula. I've had so many people with um, chronic pain that have tried everything uh, to not ever have much of a solution. Mm -hmm. Try this, and um, it's been quite a bit, quite a number of people who have broken into tears over the years. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a magical formula. Do you have something for dental, um, like an, an oil that you use orally in the mouth? Yeah. So um, I I have a, a formulation for uh, acute uh, to support the pain in acute infections. Um, We've used a, a formulation called Tooth Ease Formula. So I, I made this formula when I was living on the Big Island, Hawaii. And um, during this time, uh, one of my friend's sons was writhing in pain. Uh, he, had, uh, he had a cavity. And um, he, he was, what do I want to say? He didn't really have a lot of appreciation for essential oils or for plants. In fact, he kind of thought it was all a bunch of crap. And so he arrived at our house and he was in so much pain. And so I said, oh, um, do you want me to attempt to make you something that might help with the pain? And he was totally neutral and he was just sitting on the, sitting on the couch and he was, you know, really kind of crying and screaming and um so everyone was talking about oh he needs to see a dentist tomorrow and i went into the back room and um i came out about hour and a half two hours later and it was with this formula and so i said all right joe um do you want to give this a try and this was pretty much the first time he had ever tried something that i had offered him uh, because he was just really resistant to all of it. And um, within about within about five minutes, the pain subsided. And he used it once, and I gave him a bottle of it. And their plan was to go see a dentist the next day. And the, uh, the following day, he didn't even reapply it. It just gone. It resolved mm -hmm. Um, so that's an amazing story and experience. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to, uh, to reverse, uh, cavities. That's not my intent of sharing this. Um, whatever was Joe's particular uh, experience, we got, we were really fortunate. Um, I can also say that when I was living in Hawaii, um, this formula, when applied topically, was able to knock out four out of five staph infections between me and um, other friends uh, that had developed on the skin. Mm. And um, it was within typically about 24 to 48 hours of um, three times a day application uh, that four out of five staph infections were um, reduced, minimized, or eliminated completely. And so... Um, this is a real powerful formula, and uh, it, it's a great one to kind of keep in the medicine cabinet. You know, uh, you just reminded me of a uh, experience I had a couple of weeks ago. I was uh, went into a local herbal store to uh, find some clove oil. Somebody had I had some mouth ulcers I was dealing with, and somebody had suggested uh, just put a drop on some coconut oil and do some oil pulling with that. Yeah. It was had antibacterial properties or something, and. Uh, I think they also mentioned it, its use uh, as an anti-mold agent. And uh, when I was in the herbal store, a woman that I know approached me and she uh, said, oh, I'd use this blend. Uh, that, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Thieves Blend. And yeah. uh, 
and it has five different essential oils in it. But she told me that apparently the uh, the doctors in the um, when uh, several hundred years ago when they had bubonic plague or whatever it was at the time, if you've ever seen those doctors masks that have a really long sort of bird like nose on them, apparently uh, they would put the thieves oil blend inside that that nose and they would breathe through that because it had the anti-mold, antibacterial properties. Had you heard of that story before? Yeah, I've definitely heard a variation of that story. Um, mm. Yeah, the, th the thieves oil formulation is very powerful. Mm. Um, we have our own um, similar uh, formulation. We call it our Prabhupad immune, and it's a combination of um, peppermint, oregano, cinnamon, clove, and eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's broad spectrum antibacterial, antiviral qualities, um, stimulates the immune system. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we've, it's amazing. I mean, we'll, we'll use it in our diffuser, uh, for not feeling well, we've explored vaporizing it or even dabbing it, um, mm -hmm. specifically for respiratory infections. Um, it's really powerful, uh, expectorant qualities. It feels really cooling on the throat and lungs, um, and really enters the bloodstream quickly so it can um, really support the immune system in an effective manner. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so thieves, you know, one, one thing that's great about essential oils um, is that uh, they are whole plant extracts. Um, and they are, uh, I mean, I guess they're missing lots of molecules that are, are heavier and kind of uh, in their... Um, hydrophilic but what i mean by that is um you're you're starting from a whole plant when you're extracting out the oils and so you ha are utilizing nature's perfect symphony um expression of uh, the different aromatic components and so um you're typically nature does a great job of balancing the side effect profiles um with between the the components between the the synergy of the the compounds found inside the plants and so um with single ingredients let's say a pharmaceutical drug or if you're reducing an essential oil to an active ingredient um, you might have a really powerful pharmacological mechanism inside of the human body um, but sometimes that's going to cause other areas of the body to experience somewhat of an imbalance effect. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the, the nice thing about having a whole plant extract um, is that nature's symphony provides balance. Mm. Yeah, that's fascinating. I'd, I'd heard uh, that kind of theme talked about uh, with the use of cannabis, you know, um, the cannabinoids uh, balancing out the THC and, it and whatnot. So that's that's fascinating. Yep. Yeah. And th they call that the entourage effect in the world of cannabis. Okay. The entourage effect. Why? What's the, it, what's the meaning of that? Um, the entourage effect is the idea that uh, the cannabinoids and the terpenes will really synergize and create an entourage quality. So, you know, one plus one plus one normally equals three, but when you synergize all these different compounds, all of a sudden it equals five or nine. Mm. And maybe some of the side effect profiles are going to be uh, a little bit stunted. And so it's going to, you know, maybe your consciousness will be clear and you're not going to feel so stoned. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's definitely an interesting world. I know that when I was first experimenting with cannabis and essential oils, what I found was not only was there an increased uh, level of um, uh, therapeutic effect that one could perceive, um, I was finding that it would it was also modulating the uh, the perceived effects of the cannabis, um, so of the high. And um, like I, when I experimented with a few different essential oils, um, I'll give you an example. Adding some lavender, it really helped to calm down the overall experience. Mm -hmm. I actually felt, um, 
I didn't feel as high. I felt a little bit more in my body. And I think I may have been experiencing a deeper level of um, high, but I think that I was more present in my body. So I was able to be uh, more with the experience of the euphoria. Mm. Um, so it's really an interesting world when you start learning about um, cannabis, the effects that the, the terpenes and the oils um, on how they can modulate the effects. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I started playing around with all of that around 2011, the oils plus cannabis. And so um, it's been quite a journey since then. Is there any capacity to work with fungi at all in terms of essential oils? Um, we have seen some. Um, we have seen some. Uh, some. I, I'm trying to remember what type of edible mushroom um, absolute that I, I've received. Um, so you know, essential oil. I haven't seen. Uh, is it possible? Maybe. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really not sure in this moment. I have seen solvent extracts of them, and I do have a belief that we can do a pretty gnarly, amazing uh, ultrasonic extract on some mushrooms. So I actually have um, a kilo of lion's mane uh, that we're going to experiment with probably in 2019. Awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, any other products or anything that you want to show us right at the moment? Let's see. Um, tuning into that reality. I feel like this has been a great transmission. Um, sure. You know, I, get, I guess I can just share. Um, we have a lot of uh, different information about essential oils and plants on our website. Um, yep. So that's a great resource. Um so people, the, if they want to. Yeah, sorry, I was going to ask you the, the website, if you can share that for yeah. people. Yeah, man, it's uh, essentialoilwizardry.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also happy to, uh, to support kind of creating a, a support system for your audience and listeners. Um, if, uh, if you're interested, I'd be happy to set up a coupon code for your community. Um, to offer them 10% off uh, if they are listening to this transmission and they're feeling inspired. Uh, I'd like to create a, a win, win, win opportunity for everyone. Yeah, uh, right. So. Okay. Well, we can, uh, yeah, we can definitely get that organized. We'll do that at some stage after the interview, I guess. And people can, or, or will they just be able to find it via your website? Um, I would say, uh, would you love it to be future self? Yeah, 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 definitely. Great. So cool. if uh, if if our audience wants to um, use future self as a coupon code, then that will um, yeah, that will provide a 10 percent off for any investments that you choose to make. And um, yeah. What else, Carlos? Uh, you know, I, I, as you said, I think it's been an awesome transmission, dude. I really uh, appreciate, again, the, the enthusiasm and energy that, and knowledge base and experience that you bring to it all. So, yeah, it's been a, a real pleasure to, to have this, this time with you, man. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. Well, um, tell you what, in 2020, if we want to do another sesh together, we can give some uh, some time and space for people to digest and integrate and experiment and learn. And uh, we can do a deeper dive next round. Yeah, I could go for hours and hours and hours and days <laughs> and days. <laughs> yes, I know, and I can as well. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely set that up, man. That'd that'd be awesome. I'd love it. Cool, bro. Okay, bro. Well, I suppose we can sign off at this point, then, huh? Thank sure. you. Much love. Yeah.